What you see here is um, an embryo of a uh, forming planetary system. Um, and uh, what uh, we were able to measure thanks to this kind of images was is the, sorry, the very precisely the temperature and the density of the gas in this forming planetary system and to um, really estimate uh, how much gas is being dissipated due to the irradiation of the massive stars. Perhaps it's important to ask uh, the big question, which is uh, um, the context. And what we are trying to do is to understand our origins, the origins of uh, planetary systems, like our own um, solar system. And to do that with the James Webb Space Telescope, we observe uh, regions like the Orion Nebula, where we are seeing some planetary systems being formed. And so by looking there, it's, uh, by analogy, we can go back to the past in a way, and, and, and see these forming planetary systems uh, almost uh, live. Um, and what we are very interested in, especially in uh, Orion, is to see the effect of um, neighboring stars. So when a planetary system forms, usually you have other stars nearby, and in particular you have what we call massive stars, which are typically 10 times the mass of the Sun. So, they are not very massive, but they are very, very bright. Their luminosity is 100,000 times the luminosity of the sun. And so it means they will cast a very strong illumination and radiation over all these forming planetary systems. And in fact, we know that when the solar system formed, probably there was a massive star nearby and it must have disappeared uh, since. Um, but it was illuminating the forming solar system. And what we try to do is to assess precisely what this illumination from massive stars does on a forming planetary system. Um, so what you see in this image is uh, the Hubble Space Telescope image of the uh, inner parts of the Orion Nebula. And um, you have the massive stars from the trapezium cluster here, which illuminate all this, this gas and the little points that you see also in the image. These are young stars, um, sun-like stars, or sometimes a little bit less massive than the sun. Um, and if you zoom in with the James Webb Space Telescope, this is the kind of image that you see. So what um, we did is, thanks to James Webb, which looks uh, in the infrared, it provides um, unprecedented details on the physics and the composition of these forming planetary systems. And uh, in particular, we were able to make a very precise measurement of how the gas from which planets is supposed to form, how it is dissipated due to the um, light of the massive stars. These, these massive stars, they heat up the disk from which the planets are supposed to form. And this generates a wind um, and the, the gas escapes. We call that photo evaporation. So it's like these planetary systems or forming planetary systems are evaporating. And what we measure is the rate at which this gas and matter is escaping. And we found that it's about the equivalent of the one Earth mass per year. And so what it means is that uh, over a time scale of about one million years, you remove all the matter. And, and, and what it means is that it's very difficult to form a planet maybe like Jupiter. Um, in Orion, around, around the, the young stars there. So what does it mean for the solar system where we have a planet like Jupiter? Um, so the, there, there are many possible answers to, to, to this question. Um, one of them is that the star that we studied in Orion is um, around which uh, there is a protoplanetary disk is much less massive than the Sun. Therefore, it has less gravity, and so it, it is not uh, able to uh, retain the matter so well as the Sun would be able to. So when you have a stronger, a bigger star and a stronger gravitational field, you can keep the matter and then form planets, which is not the case when the star is, it has a lower mass. Also, it may be possible that when the solar system formed, the massive stars were further than what we see in, uh, in Orion. So there is a number of possible parameters that may be involved. What is very interesting, I think, is that, um, as always in, 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 in these kind of uh, studies, you see that there are many ingredients that are important. 
Um, and you know, you, what is important is to um, understand what are the physical mechanisms that are important. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do, identify why this UV radiation plays an important role. And it was, uh, before that, it was not studied a lot uh, due to um, the difficulties to observe Orion, for instance. And so this is what we bring to the picture, also this new ingredient uh, that we think is, is also very important. Um, UV radiation can also play a role not only in the physics, but in the chemistry. So this irradiation from massive stars can also activate the chemistry, for instance, um, be a catalyst of the organic chemistry. And organic chemistry is, of course, very important for life. So you see these nearby neighboring massive stars, they can play various roles. They can sometimes destroy planets. Uh, and in some cases, they can activate an organic chemistry. Uh, so it, we think it's an important uh, ingredient that must be uh, studied.